Hi, my name's Paul Grogan, and in this Gaming Rules video, I'm going to be teaching you how to play Tzolkin, the Mayan calendar, designed by Daniel Tashini and Simone Luciani, and published by Czech Games Edition. In Tzolkin, you take on the role of the leader of a Mayan tribe, and must send your workers out to gather resources, which you will use to construct buildings, develop new technologies, and to make offerings to the gods. The unique part of the gameplay involves the use of the gears, which rotate one step at the end of each round of the game. Any workers on the gears when they rotate move to better action spaces, making time an important factor in your strategy. A game of Zolkin is played over a series of rounds, with each round being one step of the central gear. The central Zolkin gear is divided into Age 1 and Age 2, and in each age there are two food days, one halfway through the age and the other at the end of an age. On a food day you must feed your workers with corn, and then you will gain either resources or victory points based on the position of your markers on the temples. At the end of the second age, the central gear will have completed one full revolution, and this marks the end of the game. After end game scoring, the player with the most victory points wins the game. I'm going to go over the setup for a four player game. If you're playing with two or three players, please refer to the appropriate sections in the rulebook on how to set up the game. Also, before your first game, you need to assemble the gears and the stickers and place them onto the board as shown in the rulebook. To set up the game, first place corn harvest tiles on each of the spaces around the palenque gear. Then, on action spaces 3, 4 and 5, place a wood harvest tile on top of each corn tile. Rotate the central sulking gear so that the arrowhead points to one of the teeth with a blue mark on it. Place all the wood, stone, gold and crystal skulls in a bank on the board. Place all the corn in a bank next to the board. The rulebook says to put the corn on the central gear, but for this video I'm just going to place him here. Separate the buildings and monuments into three face down stacks according to the backs. Deal six monuments face up into the monument spaces on the game board. Put the rest of the monuments back in the box as they're not needed. Deal six age one buildings face up onto the building spaces. Leave the remaining buildings face down next to the board. Each player chooses a colour, taking the player board and three workers in their chosen colour. Then, place one of each player's markers onto the zero step of each temple. And place another marker of each player on the left hand space of each of the technology tracks. Place the scoring marker of each player on the zero space of the scoring track. Deal four starting wealth tiles face down to each player. Look at your wealth tiles and choose two of them, discarding the others. Then, take the bonuses shown on the tiles. For example, if I choose these two tiles, I start the game with 12 corn, 2 wood, 1 stone, and I move my marker on the brown temple one space upwards. And finally, choose a start player and give them the starting player marker. In each round, the player with the starting player marker takes their turn, followed by all other players in clockwise order. On your turn, you have two choices. You can either place any number of your workers onto available spots on the gears, or pick up any number of your workers from the gears and perform the appropriate actions. You are not allowed to both place workers and pick them up on the same turn. And also, you are not allowed to pass and do nothing. You must either place workers or pick them up. You start the game with three workers, although you can get more during the game. To place a worker, choose any of the out of five gears and place your worker on the lowest numbered available action space. So, if you were the start player in the first round of the game and you choose to place a worker on the palenque gear, you must place that worker on the zero space. You may choose to place more than one worker, and if you do, the additional workers may be placed on the same gear or a different gear. If you place it on the same gear, it will go on the next lowest numbered space. Once you have placed your workers, you must pay for them using corn. Each worker costs a number of corn equal to the number of the action space that you've placed it on. So for example, if I placed these two workers on Palenque, it would cost me zero corn for this one, 
and one corn for this one. Also, you pay additional corn based on how many workers you place in that turn. This is shown on the left hand side of your player aid. For example, if I placed those two workers, it would cost me an additional one corn. Basically, the more workers you place in a turn, the more expensive it is. At this point, I will mention the begging rule, because it normally applies when you're about to place workers. If you start your turn with less than three corn, you can beg, and this gives you additional corn for you to use on your turn. The amount of corn you get depends on how many corn you currently have. Basically, you bring your total back up to three corn. So if you beg when you have two corn, you only gain one. But if you beg when you have no corn, you will gain three corn. Begging angers the gods, and you must choose one of your markers on one of the temples and move it down one space. After begging, you continue with the rest of your turn as normal. The other option you have on your turn is to pick up one or more of your workers from the gears. When you pick up a worker, you may perform the action from the space where the worker was standing. Alternatively, you may perform a lower numbered action on the same gear, but to do so, you have to pay one corn for each step back. For example, here, my worker will collect one gold and two corn, but if I really need a stone, which is gathered from space two, I can pay one corn to the bank to be able to use the action space one step lower, gaining me one stone and one corn. Note that if your worker is on the last spaces of the gears, you can perform any of the previous actions on that gear without having to pay corn to step back. If you decide to pick up more than one worker, you can do so in any order. Also note that picking up a worker from a gear doesn't actually cost any corn. You've paid the corn when you place the worker on there. And remember, you can either place workers on your turn or pick them up. You cannot do both. After all players have taken a turn, the Tzolkin gear is rotated one day counterclockwise. This advances all workers currently on gears one space. If no player placed a worker on the starting player space, which I'm about to explain, take one corn from the supply and place it on the current tooth of the Tzolkin gear. If, when the gears rotate, there was a worker on the highest numbered spot of a gear, it's returned to its owner without getting to do an action. So you should try to use your workers before this happens. In Zolkin, the starting player marker does not automatically go round the table at the end of each round. Instead, it only changes when someone places a worker on this space, which has a corn cost of zero, but is still one of the spaces that you place your workers onto. So you pay the usual cost if you're placing more than one worker in that turn. Placing a worker on this space gives you a number of benefits. First, at the end of your turn in which you placed a worker here, you collect all of the corn which has accumulated on the teeth of the central gear. Remember, one corn is placed onto the central gear at the end of a round in which nobody placed a worker on the starting player space, which means the longer the game goes on before somebody places a worker there, the more corn will have accumulated. The worker stays on the space until the end of the round, and then before you advance the calendar, you have to perform a couple of extra steps. First, you take the worker on the starting player space back to your supply. Second, you take the starting player marker, and you become the first player for the next round. If, however, you already have the starting player marker, then it's passed to the player to your left. So either way, if you place a worker on the starting player space, the start player will change. And finally, when the calendar advances, you may choose to advance it two days instead of one. You only get to do this if you were the one that placed a worker on the starting player space, whether or not you are then the starting player. There are some restrictions on advancing the calendar twice. The first one being that if you do advance it twice, you have to flip over your player aid to the dark side. And once it's flipped over, you cannot choose to advance the calendar twice again. The second restriction is that you may not advance the calendar twice if the second rotation of the gear would push a worker off the end of one of the gears. <laughs> 
Palenque is where you will harvest food and wood from the jungle. The first action space to explain is this one, with the light blue background. Taking a worker from this space simply gets you three corn. It actually represents fishing, but there's no fish tokens included in the game, so we just use corn instead. This next action space gets you four corn, and you also take one of the harvest tiles. I'll explain more about these tiles later on, but they simply represent that you have harvested corn. They are not actually worth any corn themselves. Once a particular section is empty of corn harvest tiles, then no more corn can be harvested on that location without the use of technology, which I'll come on to later. The remaining action spaces represent the deep jungle. In order to grow corn here, you will first have to clear the trees. You have two choices. Either chop down the trees, taking the harvest tile and receiving the amount of wood depicted on the space. This then reveals the corn tile underneath, so the next player to harvest from this space could choose to harvest corn. Alternatively, you can burn down the forest, which discards the wood harvest tile, and then you can take the corn yourself. Note that burning down the forest angers the gods, and you must move one of your markers down one step on one of the temples. The mountains of Yaxchilian offer a variety of valuable resources, including crystal skulls. When you take a worker from a space on this gear, you get the resources shown, which sometimes includes corn. Tikal is the centre of architectural and technological development. There are three types of action on this gear. Increasing your technology, constructing buildings, or giving offerings to the gods. The technology spaces allow you to advance one tech level for this space, and up to two tech levels for this space. I'll explain more about technologies in a later chapter. This space allows you to construct one building from the buildings on offer. And this space allows you to construct up to two buildings or one monument. I'll explain more about the buildings and monuments later on. Action Space 5 allows you to spend any one resource block, either wood, stone or gold, to move one space up on two different temples. Your markers on the temples will give you either resources or victory points when there is a food day, so the higher you are, the better. The top step of each temple is special. Only one player can occupy this position at any time. And when you reach the top position, if your player board has been flipped over to the darker side, you can flip it back giving you the ability to advance the calendar twice once again. Uxmal is the commercial hub, where you can perform a variety of actions. Each space here offers something quite different. This space allows you to pay three corn to move one of your markers one step up on one of the temples. This space is the market. You may exchange resources for corn as many times as you like, using the conversion rate shown here. For example, I could exchange 3 gold for 12 corn, and then use 8 of that corn to buy 4 wood. This space allows you to take an extra worker which you keep for the rest of the game. Extra workers can be very useful, but remember, the more workers you have, the more corn you will have to pay when it's a food day. This space is constructing a building, but instead of paying the normal cost in resources, you pay two corn for each resource required. You cannot use this action to construct a monument. And finally, this space allows you to pay one corn to perform any one action on any space of either the Palenque, Yaxchilian, Tikal or Uxmal gear. Chichen Itza is a sacred place where you can leave crystal skulls to earn the favour of the gods. When you remove your worker and perform an action here, you must place a skull from your supply onto the space. That skull remains there for the rest of the game, so that specific action space may only be used once for the whole game. The reward you get for placing a skull here is a number of victory points, a step up on the indicated temple, and sometimes a resource block of your choice. Note that you do not need a skull to place a worker on this gear, only when you take the worker off to perform the action. The buildings and monuments currently available are shown here. 
The cost to build one of them is shown in the top left of the tile. This one, for example, costs two stone and one wood. Buildings have a variety of effects, which are all explained in the rulebook, but I'll tell you about a few of them now. This tile is a farm, and automatically feeds one of your workers on a food day. This tomb gives you one step up on the brown and green temples when you build it. And this shrine improves your architecture technology by one step. Technologies will be explained in the next chapter. Normally, improving your technology costs resource blocks, but these small X's on the tile indicate that this particular improvement is free. Any buildings taken from this row are replaced at the end of a player's turn. And at the end of Age 1, all the buildings here are discarded and replaced with buildings from the Age 2 stack. Monuments give bonus victory points at the end of the game. This one, for example, will give you four victory points for each corn harvest tile you have at the end of the game, which is why collecting them can be useful. Monuments are not replenished when built. There are four technology tracks in the game. Agriculture, resource extraction, architecture and theology. Each technology has three levels from left to right, and a fourth bonus space. There are various ways to increase your technology. We just saw one of them on a building tile. But remember back to the TCAL gear? There were two action spaces there which allow you to increase your technology. Normally, you must pay resource blocks to move your marker forward on a technology track. To move to the first level costs one block. To move from level one to level two costs two blocks and to move from level 2 to level 3 costs 3 blocks. The resources you pay do not have to be the same. Once you have reached level 3 in a technology, then any time you gain a technology advancement, you can pay one block to receive the bonus on the fourth space. However, your marker stays on level 3, so you could keep doing this each time you gain a technology advancement. The technology levels are all explained in the rulebook, but the important thing about them is that they are all cumulative. For example, level 1 architecture gives you one corn each time you build a building, and level 2 gives you two victory points when you build a building. So if I have level 2 architecture, then I actually get two victory points and one corn every time I build a building. There is one exception to the architecture technology. Action Space 4 on the TCAL gear allows you to build two buildings, but if you do, you can only apply the architecture bonus to one of them. As I mentioned earlier on, there are four food days in the game, effectively dividing the game into four quarters. Apart from the first round of the game, whenever the arrowhead is pointing to a tooth on the central gear marked with a blue or orange sticker, then that round is a food day. You play the round as normal, but then before the calendar advances, you must feed your workers by paying two corn for each of them in your supply or on the gears, and you must feed as many of them as possible. For each worker that you cannot feed, you lose three victory points. After everyone has fed their workers, the temple gods give rewards to all players depending on the position of their markers on the temples. On the orange food days, which occur halfway through each age, all players receive the resources depicted on the temples for the step they are on, and the lower steps too. So in this example, the blue player receives two stone from the brown temple, nothing from the yellow temple, and one wood from the green temple. The blue food days occur at the end of an age, that is, halfway through the game, and also on the last round. Instead of resources, the temples pay out victory points, according to the space where your markers are. So in this example, Blue scores 6 points for the brown temple, loses 2 points for the yellow temple, and scores 3 points for the green temple. Also, when the temples are scored, the player who is highest on each temple gets the bonus points shown here for the end of age 1, and here for the end of age 2. If more than one player is tied for the highest position, all tied players get half the bonus. After the fourth food day, the central gear will have made one complete revolution, and this marks the end of the game. You will score points for your remaining corn and resources, three points for each crystal skull, and then points for your monuments. 
and the player with the most points wins the game. I hope you found this video useful in learning how to play Tzolkin, the Mayan calendar. And if you want to see more of my videos, please check out my YouTube channel and subscribe. Take care, and thanks for watching.